Greetings, church. I'm so glad that you could join us for our worship service today. I hope that you all had an enjoyable Easter and that you're safe and healthy and staying at home as much as possible. Some of you are not able to do that. You are essential workers and and uh, to you we say thank you for all that you're doing to keep us going and to provide for our needs. Your service is seen and it's appreciated. Some of you are having to ride this out alone in your homes and are grieving the connections with friends and family in a special way. To you, I say, do all that you can to remain connected with other folks by phone, by internet, by mail, or whatever means you have. And if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Some of you are struggling with too much time with folks that you live with. No matter how much you love and respect your family, there is such a thing as overload. And to you, I say, take a walk, take a shower, take a nap, do whatever you can to get some distance when you need it. And to all of you, I say, my prayers are always with you. I miss you with all of my heart, and I hope that you find comfort and connection through this worship service today. Scripture says that all things work together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. We may not know how all things are going to work together, but we have faith that somehow they will. And now let's begin our service with the opening prayer. This is an adaptation of A Prayer for a Pandemic by Cameron Bellum. Let us pray. Almighty God, we who are trying to settle into new routines acknowledge that we are frustrated, frightened, and confused. In the space of weeks, we have entered into a whole new way of being, and we find it unsettling. May we who are merely inconvenienced Remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making the rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools are closed remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle for in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. And now let's sing together, O oh, Worship the King.
This morning's scripture reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now today's special music is from a new cantata by one of Felton Viola's favorite composers, Pepper Choplin. Pepper has given special permission for churches to stream parts of this new cantata during online worship, and we are grateful for his thoughtfulness. On the evening of that first day, the disciples were together, but Thomas was not with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Now you know it's true. I am here, I'm with you. I'm alive again. Peace be unto you. After three days my body would rise Though I died I would live again Though you're frightened, be calm You've got to be strong For the trials and the days ahead I told you that after three days My body would raise Though I died I would live again Though you're frightened, be calm You've got to be strong For the trials and the days ahead I see the nail prints there in his hands And I touch where the nails have been Till my eyes have seen I'll never believe that the Lord is alive again Unless I see the nail prints there in his hands And I touch where the nails have been Till my eyes have seen I'll never believe that the Lord is alive again Thomas see the nail prints here in my hands Come and touch where the nails have been Now your eyes have seen Now Thomas believe Never doubt again Now I see the nail prints 
Once they're in your hands, I can touch where the nails have been. Now my eyes have seen and I can believe. I'll never doubt again. Today is the first Sunday after Easter. And the story that we're following, the story that was read in the gospel lesson from John, has Jesus appearing to the disciples for the first time and telling them, peace be with you. This wasn't a very peaceful time. It was a time of fear and isolation. And then a week later, Jesus appears again and this time Thomas is there. And Thomas puts his hand in Jesus' side and touches the, the nail scars on his hands and his feet. And he's persuaded that this truly is the Christ. Thomas, he, uh, he's had a bad rap over the years, hasn't he? But if I'm honest, he's the one who resonates with me the most. The idea of Jesus' resurrection is as hard today as it was for Thomas. First century people may not have been scientists, but they all knew that dead men don't rise to new life. The resurrection is a jolt to anyone's imagination, even if they're not Thomas. Mark 16 says, that Jesus' followers were overcome with fear and dread when they fled from the tomb. It says that nothing, they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. They were afraid that the people would call them crazy and that people would think that they were out of their minds. Believing in the resurrection is demanding. It requires that we set aside what we know to be true through science, and through our own observations. And embrace a belief that something supernatural and beyond our own understanding has happened. To be Christian, we need to be okay with people outside the church who think that we are gullible or naive or worse. In the Apostles' Creed, we confess that we believe that and the resurrection of the body. But we need to be clear about what that is. We know the story of Lazarus as Jesus raised him from the dead. His body was reanimated and he continued his life until his eventual second death. But Jesus' resurrection is different. Jesus wasn't resuscitated like Lazarus was. He was raised to a new and different kind of life. The resurrection meant new life in a new body, not the return of the same old life in a perishable mortal body. Jesus' earthly body that is transformed into an immortal spiritual body. Now we humans, we, we fight death. When it comes to our bodies, we expect medicine to do its part to stave off death for as long as possible, up to and including existence on a ventilator. But the reality is that in order for resurrection to happen, there must first be a death. 
So my question for you this morning is, do you really believe in the resurrection? Do you really want resurrection if something of significance, something that you value, something that you love has to die? Are you willing to sacrifice something that was in order to get something that's new? I submit that few of us are ever ready to make that kind of sacrifice. We all have things that we're hanging on to. We all have things that we refuse to let die, even though we know that the time has come. I suggest that there is something that all of us are unwilling to offer up. And so I ask again, do you really believe in resurrection? Do you really want resurrection? If the thing you're holding on to were to die, do you really believe that something new and wonderful would be resurrected? A parishioner once exclaimed, I'm cancer free. Wonderful, said her pastor, who had walked with her through months of difficult treatments. The one who was considered terminally ill was now restored to health. Yes, wonderful, she said, but a bit disconcerting. How do you mean that, said the pastor. Well, I took the doctors at their word. They said I was terminal, that there was little chance that the therapy would be successful. So I planned to live for about another year and then to die. That was what they told me to expect. Now, to be told that I have so many more years to live, that I have a future, well, it's just a bit disconcerting. I've got to go ahead and live, despite all my plans to die. Even Jesus found himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying that God would not let him die, praying that God would come up with another plan that would allow him to live. Ultimately, he prayed that God's will would be done, and to the disciples' great astonishment, God did come up with another plan that allowed Jesus to live. We're like Thomas, looking for proof that resurrection has happened or will continue to happen. Our spirits are willing, but our flesh and our faith are often weak. We want to live like we believe. We want the resurrection and all it offers, but often we find ourselves resisting, avoiding, doubting. So where's the hope? Maybe you remember another story in Mark. Jesus had just returned from the Mount of Transfiguration when he came upon a large crowd surrounding his disciples. An argument was taking place and people were fired up. Jesus asked what was going on and a man from the crowd explained that the disciples had been trying to cast out a demon out of this man's son but had failed. Jesus gets a little irritated with them and tells them to bring the boy to him. The boy is brought to Jesus, but when the spirit inside the boy sees Jesus, it immediately throws the boy into a convulsion. The boy's father says to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus assures the man everything is possible for one who believes. Here's where the story gets really interesting. Immediately, the boy's father realizes that he's in trouble. He wants to believe, and at some level he does, but there's this little seed of doubt. And what he says next to Jesus is something that brings me hope every single day of my life. He says, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe. I do believe but I need Jesus' help every single day of my life to overcome my unbelief. Oh, my word, people, that one sentence gives me life. 
That's what Jesus did for Thomas. He showed him his hands, his feet, his side. He helped Thomas in his unbelief. And that's what he does for me. And that's what he'll do for you. Mark my word. If you watch for it, if you're open to it, if you ask for it, I do believe Jesus. Help me in my unbelief. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. Thank you for Thomas and his doubts. Thank you for the father and his son in the gospel of Mark. And thank you for how you help us in our unbelief every day, all the time. We're imperfect beings made perfect in your love. Lord, show us how to die to ourselves and to believe and to want resurrection where all things are made new through you. Amen. And now let's sing together in Christ alone by Mercy Me. solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand
And now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you harmony in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. See you next week.